This is Dr. Noman Siddiqui from Baltimore, Maryland, and I'm very excited to demonstrate the Arthrex Minimally Invasive Bunionectomy and the new dedicated system to perform the osteotomy and correction and screw placement accurately within one set. As you can see, it is important to get a good lateral x-ray so you can draw the midline of the long axis of the first metatarsal. So you'll make the incision with your beaver blade that's provided in the set. It's a stab incision. I tend to make it approximately two centimeters from the MTP joint. To complete the osteotomy, I find my point and then I carry out the cut. At this stage, you can see we have completed our transverse osteotomy, which is my preference. The transverse cut also allows for full rotation and deformity correction and placement of the sesamoids accurately, as demonstrated here. At this stage, after we've completed the osteotomy, we insert the hook into the medullary canal and we slide the translational device. The cannulated wire is placed through the translational device. You can rotate the capital fragment into correct alignment at this stage prior to obtaining purchase with the wire. On the AP view, the wire should end at the lateral cortex of the metatarsal head. On lateral view, you can see our guide is midline with the hook bisecting the long axis of the metatarsal, and this will ensure we're placing our fixation in the mid portion of the metatarsal. At this stage, we're going to utilize the translating knob and turn it to achieve translation of the capital fragment. As you can see, we've translated the capital fragment over 50%, and in this mild example, that's appropriate. However, in cases of larger IM angles, it's not abnormal to see upwards of 75 to 90 plus percent translation. At this stage, the arc of the guide is placed over the guide wire to the appropriate laser line and then tightened. Next, one of the sleeves is inserted to the most proximal entry point to confirm triangulation of our guide wires. Once you're satisfied with the position of the guide, an important step is to utilize the distal most hole to place a temporary guide wire to secure the guide to the foot. The key thing to make sure with this wire is that you remain on your midline drawing when placing it. This is the temporary guide wire going through the distal cannulation to stabilize the jig. When placing the cannulated sleeve, it is important that the bevel is in direct contact with the metatarsal prior to placement of the wire. Next, the guide wire is inserted through the sleeve. And we make sure we are bicortical with purchase of this wire prior to inserting into the capital fragment. The next step is to remove the temporary guide wire and to adjust the position for our distal fixation. Next, we're going to move it into the slot on the side. As previously demonstrated, another in stab incision is made and blunt dissection is carried down to bone, ensuring that the bevel can lay flush with the first metatarsal. On this image, you can see the parallel spread and adequate fixation needed to complete the correction. An important thing to always make sure is you're taking your lateral view prior to finalizing fixation to make sure that the capital fragment has been engaged. As you can see, we have a built-in depth gauge, and in this case, it's 42. We will repeat the same step for the distal screw. With the wire sleeves removed, you can proceed with drilling. Always drill the proximal one first. I like to advance the screw on power and make any final adjustments with the hand driver. As you can see, the bevel lays very nicely along the medial cortex. Sometimes due to placement of where the screws are, you may find it that a portion of the screw abuts the guide. However, our proximal screw is maintaining our position so we can remove the rest of the guide so we can finish the fixation. With the guide removed, we can finish completing the fixation. At this stage, we've achieved our objectives, which was to translate, rotate. Now, additionally, on x-ray, you can see there's a bony ledge. I typically try to palpate for it. I will do some small periosteal elevation over the bump, 
and decompress it with either a burr or a small rongeur. We recommend to complete the procedure to do an adjunctive achenosteotomy. Not only does it provide a better clinical appearance, it realigns the extensor and flexor apparatus. At this stage, you can see our hallux valgus correction has been achieved. Our achenosteotomy is perfect. Our minimally invasive arthrex bunionectomy has been completed utilizing the correction system, and we are very satisfied with this outcome. My post-op protocol for this patient will be weight-bearing is tolerated in a flat surgical shoe for four weeks and transition to a sneaker at four weeks with impact activities typically allowed somewhere between eight to 10 weeks.